Hello, let's get right into it and take a look at the worst three cruise lines, according to reviews across the internet, from which Cruise Critic, Trust Pilot, and more. One cruise line had 64% of its reviews marked as one star, and you might be surprised to hear two of these cruise lines are some of the biggest and most popular in the world, and the cruise line with the worst score really, really shocked us. Now before we begin, remember that these opinions are based on reviews and surveys online, so please don't shoot the messenger. We haven't just picked the worst reviews, we have really comprehensively looked at thousands of different reviews on different sites to have a look at what the whole feel is of this cruise line in general. Now first up is Costa Cruises. Costa Cruises is an Italian cruise line owned by Carnival Corporation who also own cruise lines such as Carnival, Princess, p and and Holland America. Costa Cruises claim to offer a unique experience that combines Mediterranean charm with a touch of luxury. One of the highlights of Costa Cruises is the diverse range of itineraries they provide, taking you to captivating destinations around the world. From the sun-soaked Mediterranean to exotic Caribbean islands, Costa Cruises is said to offer an extensive selection of destinations to choose from. Now let's talk about one of the most prominent concerns with Costa Cruises, the onboard experience. Many passengers have reported disappointment with the overall quality and variety of entertainment options provided. Whilst some cruise lines excel in offering engaging and captivating shows, Costa Cruises seems to fall short in this regard. Costa Cruises shows have been described as lacklustre and lacking the wow factor that many vacationers seek. One of the most recent reviews on Cruise Critic was an eye-opener. It said, worst cruise ship ever, waste of money and time, supposed to be all included, but you have to pay for almost everything. Helpless staff won't help you in nothing. The ship only sees money, money and money. Very disappointed. I thought it was going to be better. Lots and lots of reviews were like this, unfortunately. The nickel and diming was also a recurring theme in lots of reviews as well, with another cruiser saying, we are experienced cruisers. It was okay, but I wasn't impressed, I should say. The feeling was that the whole ship was just designed just to make money and not for the guests to enjoy the cruise. I mean, that's very, very unfortunate, isn't it? And that isn't all. Another area that has left passengers very dissatisfied is the dining experience. Despite the diverse range of culinary options advertised by Costa Cruises, lots and lots of travellers have expressed their disgust and disappointment with the quality and taste of the food. There was lots of reports of undercooked or overcooked dishes, repetitive or small menus. Bland flavours is also another recurring theme, which obviously is significantly going to impact your overall enjoyment during your time on board. I don't know about you, but food on a cruise ship plays a huge, huge part. I mean, just look at me. I like to eat food and I love cruise food, so if it isn't good, it's not going to be a nice cruise for me. Now, one person on Cruise Critic said, We just got off the boat. Worst cruise ship experience I have ever had. The food which is included in the price of the cruise was so awful that I would not even dare to give it to my dog. The ones who love their dogs will understand me, he goes on to say. Only the hamburgers and the fresh fruit were good. Can you eat for seven days only hamburgers? Gosh, I don't know about that. That sounds awful. And another review stated the food quality quality was substandard, it was mostly pasta and everything served was cold. For dinner, choices of items were limited. After three days, we did not go to the dining room but instead went to the buffet. But apparently so did everyone else where it was very overcrowded. Don't just take it from us guys, we're not just reading the bad reviews. Please go onto these websites yourself. TripAdvisor, TestPilot, Trust Pilot, whatever it's called, Cruise Critic, and you'll see for yourself. We're honestly not just picking out all of the bad reviews. We're only picking cruises which considerably get bad reviews. We're not going for cruise lines which get good reviews on the whole. We're not just making this video to scare anybody. Have a look at these reviews yourself and make your own opinion. Which consumer magazine voted Costa Cruises as the third worst out of 23 companies? So there we go. Another company rating it badly as well. Now moving on to the ships, there have been several complaints regarding maintenance and cleanliness issues. Some passengers have reported worn out furnishings, 
dirty cabins, and even plumbing problems. These problems not only hinder your comfort, but also raise concerns about the level of care and attention to detail provided by Costa Cruises. Trust me, you don't want the plumbing to go wrong on a cruise ship. Not only does it stink, it can be very embarrassing and just not nice. One cruise critic reviewer said, over the past 30 years, my wife and I have embarked on 43 cruises with various cruise lines. The decor invokes a dormitory vibe with its bright colours and formica-like countertops. It felt like a budget hotel or a college dormitory. It's not good. We have seen pictures of Costa ships and they do look pretty gash inside. We're not fans of, of the decoration. And in one of the most frustrating aspects reported by many Costa Cruises passengers is the customer service experience. There have been numerous complaints about unresponsive staff, long wait times and guest services lacking of attentiveness throughout the whole journey. When you're on a vacation, you deserve to feel valued and well taken care of. You paid a lot of money for a cruise and there really is no excuse. Things are so expensive now. But unfortunately, it hasn't been the case for some guests aboard Costa Cruises. One reviewer said, Waiter could care less about my wife and I at our own table. Never met any officers or cruise director, even after trying. Food quality poor, crowded and rude passengers. Talking to guest services was a joke. Another person said, The overall impression of our group was that the staff was never willing to accommodate any request, no matter how reasonable. Now, we saw legitimately hundreds of reviews. Just the first page is all negative reviews. So these are not just one-offs. Lots of people are suffering with the same problem. One thing that I did notice whilst reading these reviews, and it might be part of it, is that a lot of the bad reviews actually came from people in USA, Canada, and the UK. Now, Costa Cruises is primarily aimed at people from Italy and Europe. Maybe it's just a cultural thing. Maybe it just doesn't click with people from outside of these countries as much as American-style cruises cruise lines such as Royal Caribbean and Princess and Norwegian do. For example, one reviewer complained, the Costa app, which you download on your phone, is not compatible with the US app store, so we could not use. Without the app, we could not complete the safety drill. We were later asked to sign a form acknowledging the safety routine. Although this may have fulfilled Costa's obligation, this was not really acceptable for us. If this were our first or second cruise, I would have been very worried about being able to respond to an emergency. Does the ship Costa Concordia sound familiar? I mean, that's very worrying, and the fact that you can't download it on an American or British phone is quite concerning, really. It is important to note that whilst these criticisms are based on a collection of experiences, every cruise and every traveller's experience can differ. It's absolutely fine if you've been on a Costa cruise or one of these other cruise ships and you've had a great time. That's fantastic. It's just that the reoccurrence of these concerns does raise legitimate questions about the consistency and quality of the overall Costa Cruises experience. Have you been on a Costa Cruise? Let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear what you thought about it. It doesn't have to be bad. It could be that you had a fantastic time, which we'd be very happy to see. Let us know in the comment section below. And whilst you're there, please do give us a subscribe. It really helps us out. So one cruise line that may not surprise you, MSC Cruises. But we are not going to be talking about our experiences here. We've talked about them enough. We're going to be looking at the experience of others and the cruise line rankings. Now, MSC Cruises is an international cruise line known for offering a diverse range of itineraries and luxurious onboard experience. Established in 1987 and headquartered in Switzerland, not Italy as many people think, MSC Cruises has grown to be one of the largest privately owned cruise companies globally. Now, first, let's take a look at the Trust Pilot reviews. Oh my gosh, I was shocked. The overall rating from reviews, and there are thousands of them, is on average 1.7 stars out of 5 stars. The company actually calls this as bad. In fact, a whopping 64% of all the reviews are one star. Now, this really does, whether or not you've had a good cruise on MSC before, show that there are huge problems with MSC cruises for a lot of people. In fact, I didn't even pick the review. I went 
on and had a look what the first review was. The most recent review said, Hellhole, it was disgusting. Could not get anything without a queue, nor some beds available. Long wait for drinks, three hours to get off the ship. Hellhole, staff overworked, too many people. Oh, it doesn't sound good, does it? The second review, which is the very second one, states, with 44 previous cruise holidays, this was the worst. We feel like we had a holiday from hell. Long queue to get inside the terminal. Once on board, dirty balcony that took three attempts to clean properly. Buffet area resembles a service station with poor quality food. Main dining room, no better. With so many passengers, it is very difficult to get a seat in the bars and the drinks service extremely slow. We saw so many reviews like this, guys, and we have to say it does resonate with our own experience as well. We totally understand that some people are massive fans of MSE, which is fine. Again, they are a European cruise line, but something different that MSC do to Costa is that they are marketing a lot to the United Kingdom as well as the United States, basing ships here and there as well, calling their ships English names as well, moving on from their previous ships of calling them Italian names. So they are generally aiming at people in these places, so they don't have the same excuse that Costa does. Now, whilst MSC is a popular choice for many travellers, there are several reasons why people are avoiding this cruise line. One major concern is the overall customer service experience reported by lots of different passengers. A significant amount of reviews complained about long wait times, at guest services, unresponsive staff members, and many have expressed real frustration during their MSC cruises. It's one thing that we keep seeing is lots of frustration. One passenger on Trustpilot said, never ever again. My MSC Virtuosa cruise was the worst cruise experience I have ever had. MSC are understaffed. Don't expect anyone to serve you a drink in a reasonable amount of time. Calls for service go unanswered. Another said, staff are extremely rude and literally mourn about everything. Now, we've talked about which a few times. In the which report, which ranks cruise lines from best to worst, MSC came second to bottom and they were ranked worst for space on the witch ranking report and lots of reviews reflect this with one reviewer saying the senior leadership need to take an undercover boss trip on a full ship to understand and determine the issues on board this ship i feel robbed of the holiday experience promised when booking six thousand plus guests not enough staff or space it takes over 30 minutes to get a drink seats in bars are limited and difficult to find not enough sunbeds families had to sit on the floor and another commenting said pools are just overcrowded with many having to sit on the floor as there just isn't enough seating we saw lots of reviews like this another passenger said i'm not sure how a ship this size can be signed off with so little space for its passengers clearly not enough sunbeds or room for people to relax in and around the ship another issue that has garnered attention is the dining experience cruisers are complaining about undercooked or overcooked dishes and just bad food and a lack of choice one person on the review said the food is literally inedible prepared with minimum care mediocre recipes executed all wrong variety is dull specialty restaurants are a joke this fact alone is enough to strike them off your list another said miserable staff awful food nowhere to sit and at least 25 to 30 minutes to get a drink anywhere found the entertainment second rate staff to guest ratio very poor hand sanitizers mostly empty worst cruise holiday we've ever had and will never use msc again we have also had bad experiences ourselves on previous cruises but even i was surprised at the number of bad reviews it was absolutely overwhelming but like i said with costa cruises check them out yourselves don't shoot me or shout at me for not agreeing with me it's just what's there i'm not making this up so now for the really shocking one which magazine carried out an extensive survey in november 2022 to find the best and worst cruise lines which are actually a highly respected independent consumer magazine if you've not heard of them they've been around for ages and they rate and rank everything from toasters to vacuum cleaners to hotels and in this case cruise lines so like i said don't shoot the messenger i know i've said this a lot of times but please understand we get a lot of abuse when people don't agree with us 
Now, at the very bottom of the table, we find Princess Cruises as the cruise line to steer clear of. The extensive research analysed 23 different ocean cruise companies and surveyed over 1,700 cruise passengers who rated their experiences on 11 different key categories. These included cabin quality, port excursions, entertainment, social atmosphere, onboard facilities and lots more. Princess Cruise Line earned an overall customer score of 67%, which means they came at the very bottom out of these 23 cruises. They had three-star ratings in categories such as entertainment and customer service. Even though it ranks last, Princess Cruises didn't earn any less than three stars. Other cruise lines such as Costa and MSC Cruises did earn two stars in some categories, which goes to show that maybe you shouldn't trust all reviews. But three stars were given for quite a few categories compared to other cruise lines, including customer service, food and drink, value for money and entertainment. This is what brings down the overall score, because like what I said, other cruise lines just scored better in these areas. Now, Princess Cruises is also part of the Carnival Cruise Line Group, but it's more of an American style cruise line. And it's the second largest cruise line in the world by net revenue. It's been sailing since 1965, making it one of the original cruise lines. Now, like we said, to say we are shocked is an understatement. We've always had really good cruises with Princess and absolutely would not place them in the bottom. But we have to say we have noticed things sliding after the pandemic. Things have not always been perfect. We've seen this with a lot of cruise lines. Maybe Princess Cruises took things a little bit too far with too many cuts, not as many crew and staff as needed and other things. Anyway, I'll shut up and let's take a look at some of the bad reviews to see what people are actually seeing online. Now, one person on Cruise Critic said, I honestly was disappointed. I might have had too high of expectations. The ship felt overcrowded most of the time and the food was a huge disappointment. Basically dressed up cafeteria food of a super wide variety. Fruit wasn't fresh. Breads and pastries were dry and plain. Seafood was often overcooked in the cafe. Another person complained of slow service and terrible customer service. They said, after always saying, Royal Caribbean for our previous 12 cruises, we found that Princess drastically lacks in comparison. Now, taking a look at the reviews on Cruise Critic, the reviews are very mixed, much more mixed than we would have thought they would be, with many people very happy and lots of people really wanting more and feeling very disappointed indeed. So, lots of people were actually complaining about the Princess Cruises app technology as well as the medallion technology on board. If you didn't know, Princess Cruises is super famous for having some great technology. And instead of having a cruise card, you wear a wearable device which lets you into rooms and you can order lots of things on your app. One person said the service is slow. They have an app that you can use to order drinks and food to be delivered directly to you. It's a great thought, but it is ultimately useless. Now, we have to say we agree with this recently. For some reason, the app and the medallion technology seems to have got worse over the years. When it was first introduced on our first few cruises, it worked really great. But for some reason, Princess seemed determined to add more and more features, bells and whistles that absolutely do not need to be there. Just keep it very, very simple. It makes the app very slow, cumbersome, as well as complicated. It's hard to find things on the app which used to be very easy. All we need is an app where you can see what's going on and to order things like food and drink. Just as simple as that. We don't need all of the fancy games and other things like that. They're just a waste of space. Now, we really hope that they see some of the complaints and do simplify it as when the technology does work, it's definitely the best in the cruise industry. It's really fantastic. But when it doesn't work, it's so incredibly annoying. And sometimes you just think, I wish it wasn't there. So one review said the ship is small and appears old compared to other princess cruise ships. Then another said, it's really worn with marked up and beat up furniture, musty hallway carpet and rusted railings. We had a mini suite and I feel transported to season 10 of the original Love Boat in the 80s. Now we read many reviews like this complaining about the older ships in the fleet were very dated and not as nice as the newer ships. A Princess Cruises spokesman actually responded to the witch report. They said, Princess Cruises maintains very high guest service standards 
standards and is committed to delivering amazing holiday experiences for our guests. During the summer of 2022, severe labour shortages unfortunately adversely impacted our service delivery, which likely influenced our showing in the most recent witch survey. We are pleased to share that those shortfalls have been rectified and we look forward to 2023 continuing to be an exceptional year with our hard-working crew delivering the superior guest experience that Princess is renowned for. Now, a lot of cruise lines had these problems as they were finding it very difficult to train new crew members quickly. But the concern is that the reviews from July 2023 this week are still complaining of slow service and understaffed ships. So does this statement from Princess Cruises actually mean anything or is it just a cover? One review this week said the service is slow. The ship felt extremely understaffed. It's hard to get service at a bar just to order a cocktail or bottled water. The staff does not seem happy to be on the cruise. When order a coffee, you're met with annoyance. It's honestly an uncomfortable feeling. But still, we have to say we are still very shocked to see princes at the bottom. We genuinely really have enjoyed our cruises with them. Looking at other review sites online, there are many more bad reviews for the first two cruise lines compared to Princess Cruises. So this is another surprising thing. But for all of these cruise lines, there are plenty of outstanding reviews as well. So do take a look yourself. We're actually going to be sailing on Princess Cruises brand new cruise ship, Sun Princess, soon to see if any of these issues happen to us. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, make your own choices when it comes to booking things. If you're booked on one of these cruise lines, don't worry as well. Your opinion might differ widely to everybody else, but these are just based on all of the reviews we looked at. And we have to say a big thank you to our patrons as well. You too can become a patron by clicking the link in the description section below. In return, we give you a monthly Zoom call where we get to chat to you, early access to our videos and ad-free access to our videos as well. So no annoying ads. Plus we give you extra episodes and behind the scenes footage. So I guess that's it. See you next time.